keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life these are keys that keeps your marriage joyful let's get to know what the word of god prescribes marriage is a good thing Hello viewers, my name is Pastor Joan Lafont and I'd like to welcome you to today's episode of the Proverbs 31 Book Club. We have been going through a series on temperaments and we have looked at different aspects on temperaments with regard to the husband and with, with regard to the wife. And on today's telecast we would like to just look at some of the tips that we need to have, some of the tips that we need to know as far as relating to your spouse is concerned. Whether you are a sanguine husband or sanguine wife, what tips do you have? What tips do you, do you need to have, you know, under your sleeve so that you can be able to relate better with your husband or relate better with your wife? And all these other temperaments, all of us, we need some tips that helps our marriage be, be better, that, you know, enhances our relationship in the home, that helps us work together and raise our families together as a unit and so that is what we, we just want to explore so that we can gain more knowledge and more understanding as we continue to look on this very important aspect of temperaments so we are going to share some tips for all the temperaments concerned so that we can know how to better our marriages as we continue to just live together we will begin with the sanguine husband and sanguine wife what do i need to do what do I need to know so that I can relate with my wife better as a sanguine or I can relate with my husband better as a sanguine wife? Number one, the aspect of attention. Sanguines, as we saw earlier in our previous episodes, are people who are attention seekers. They actually call the life, you know, of the party. They love attention. They love, you know, when people are appreciating them and people are acknowledging them and all that kind of a thing. They have an, a burning need to be the center of attraction. So as a husband or as a wife who is a sanguine, attention is a big deal in your relationship. You cannot afford to ignore your husband. You cannot afford to ignore your wife because these are people, sanguines are people who have a need for attention and they like to be the, at the center of attraction in, in any forum, even just right from their home. So they want you to listen to their stories, they want you to laugh along, they want to be heard many, many, many times. You know, they, they, they want to tell you all the incredible things that happen during the day, they will give you the nitty gritties. There are people who are not like that. They will just give you one sentence that summarizes everything that happened in the day. But when you talk about sanguines, whether the man or the woman, there are people who would want to give you very many details, very many, you know, some of the things people ignore, then they are very easy to share. They don't struggle with those kinds of things. So what you need to do in your relationship as a man, if your wife is a sanguine, take time with them. Give them, actually, these are people who, if we, we talk about love languages, they, they, they are the kind who appreciate quality time. If you're talking to them face to face, you dare not switch on the TV, you dare not have your phone, you dare not be listening to news, you know, or reading a newspaper. They need the, your full attention. They need quality time. They might not be with you the whole day, but the time, the short time you spend together, they appreciate if it's quality, where they have their attention, one-on-one, -on -one, eyeball to eyeball kind of conversation. So, take time with your husband, sit down, listen to them, let them feel loved by your giving them attention. Let your husband feel loved by your giving your attention. Let your wife feel loved by the way you give them attention. Because that is what, you know, kind of like makes the heart tick. They de desire that attention so much. If they don't get it at home, 
you know what happens many times they go look for it outside so one of the tips that you need to have as a sanguine man or a sanguine woman is giving attention to your spouse making them feel the center of attraction having quality time with them as you engage with each other number two avoid criticism avoid do not criticize them even when they tell so many stories do not criticize them even when they exaggerate issues because they like to exaggerate too much sometimes they, they go overboard it wears them down you know and leaves them un unhappy so what you need to know or what you need to do in that in, in this matter is get to know how to talk to them not in a way of discouraging them or leaving them unhappy or wearing them down avoid criticism in other words avoid just avoid to criticize and look for another way of sharing the message you have to them without having to criticize them because as as as, as i'm telling you that wears them down that discourages them that leaves them unhappy do not push sanguines too much don't quieten them because they become depressed they become negative it's not too easy to quieten them it's not easy to they kind of like get depressed because it's like when they are talking when they are expressive that is when they enjoy life that is what when they feel blessed so just learn how to to manage that i know by the grace of god he's able to show us there are some things that are not written in any book anywhere but when you live with your husband or when you live with your wife sometimes god supplies the wisdom on how to manage their lives sometimes god will just show you how to 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 work out certain things that you might not read in any book but just out of experience and the wisdom of god you're able to get some some hands on uh, experience and knowledge understanding and insight on how to live and just be able to enjoy your marriage number four tip is ex acceptance we can talk about acceptance accept your sanguine just like you are supposed to accept it's your melancholy husband or wife choleric husband or wife phlegmatic husband accept your sanguine accept your sanguine wife the way they are accept your sanguine husband the way they are it is only until when you're able to accept them that you'll be able to learn and understand them and appreciate living with them because if you don't accept them it means down down in your heart there's a kind of rejection and dissatisfaction for you to relieve yourself of those kinds of things dissatisfaction and discouragement accept them then from there the lord will be able to help you to do to do other things that can that will cover up for that thing that you think is a dissatisfaction sanguines have such a that their need they have such a need for for acceptance and it's a deep need by the way they have such a need for acceptance so accept do not judge them do not criticize them like i said earlier they are kind of people who need a lot of affection that is something you have to learn to to do yeah accept them show them your love embrace them and when you do that it will remove that dissatisfaction yeah because when you give them that there's there's a reflection of a character that will bounce back to you and then that will take care of your dis dissatisfaction but if you don't accept them then you find that they they feel that their need is not met and you will be able to 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 feel that in your relationship and then it escalates into different other things so to avoid that long story and that long chain just accept them show them love show them affection and when you show them love and you show them affection there is a way they will respond that will be a blessing to you as a woman or be a blessing to you as a man because of that aspect of showing acceptance help them organize their lives 
yeah sometimes they don't know how to organize their lives and so one of the tips for you to be able to live them with them well happily is your being able to organize their lives whether you're a husband or a wife i have a friend who has a wife who's a sanguine and he really has a way of helping her organize her life especially when 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 that maybe she's going for a trip the man knows how to you know arrange her suitcase for her because her she's the kind who will just throw stuff into the suitcase and march out but he has a way of organizing until she just feels blessed she likes it so much when he is able to organize that and also he's the kind of man who, who doesn't feel has a, have any chills when it comes to to tidying the bedroom or even making the bed he has a way of making that bed he doesn't want to see any fold you know he imagine he will just come if it's not well done he will come remove it and redo it in a way that it is flat and and smooth so these are things that you husband and wife learn and just get to understand and that makes them live happily and once you accept your is your sanguine or your melancholy or whoever then you find that it is b- different and it is better so help them organize their lives you know uh if for the wife if it's permissible you can even help him organize his office yeah the, the, i used to have a boss who his office the, the desk was like there was some breeze that came and just blew papers all, all over the place and if i go and touch and maybe i want to help him sort one or two things arrange things here and there he says he will get confused so many times i would find myself working on that desk when he's away because when it is arranged he says he understands the disarrangement and he knows what paper is where what document is where in that whole mess but for me and you know you i want to put it in order so help organize her help organize him if it's permissible you can also still go up to the office you know help him do reminders if it comes to calendar issues and the, and you know because many times they forget as you organize his life do this with a servant's heart not with a lot of criticism also or nagging attitude because then that negates what you want to achieve have a servant's heart and don't be nagging so that he can appreciate what you're trying to do Don't be bossy. If you're pushy and bossy, sanguines don't like to be bossed around. They don't like to be bossed around. So just assure them of your love in spite of the inf- imperfections. Don't boss them around. Just that assurance of love will draw them close and then that makes your relationship better. Any any of these tips as you work out on them as you as you perform them, as you you know, if affect them in your lives kind of like it transform your relationship by and by and by the way be patient because it's not a one day event some of the things some of the changes come slowly slowly with time you realize that somebody's temperament is changing somebody's character is different and you're able you're at ease with each other than than before another thing that uh, sanguine's uh, delight in is approval so give them approval give them approval If you withhold it, it's like they will look for it elsewhere. You know, even if it's among their friends, peer pressure at the office, that kind of a thing. So your approval will help them overcome that weakness. As a wife, your approval is very important. As a husband, your approval to her is also very key. So give them approval so that they don't they will not be uh, uh desiring it outside which now causes them to flat which causes them to now misbehave because there are people who are hungry for approval hungry for a pat on their back so just provide that so that they will be able to overcome that weakness and just stay within the boundaries and the limits that they are supposed to have let's look at what to do if you're married to a choleric husband or wife what are some of the tips uh that you need what are some of the tips that you desire for that relationship to be to be better number one accept their weaknesses because um there's a way cholerics are perfectionists 
they never want to see mistakes they never want to see things going wrong a tip that you need in your bag to enhance that relationship is accepting their weakness don't be a perfectionist all the time in their face because uh, they, are, they, ha they, they have that kind of weakness so accept them and work with them you know cover cover for them in places where you think there are gaps in places where you see things are not going right or they are not being done in a certain way you can cover and you can step in so accept their weaknesses that will go a long way in enhancing your relationship instead of every time calling out the mistakes you know criticizing and pointing up the wrongs accept and now cover up or even show sometimes show people sometimes do things because they don't know better and they don't know how to do so show them and then that will be better maintain a sense of obedience is a very important thing just being obedient you know as a wife being obedient, obedient as a woman because for example the choleric husband likes the wife to see things his way which is interesting sometimes it's not easy because it's not all the time that you see things uh, the way your husband's way or you see things the, the, the way your wife sees them that takes a lot of time also you know for you to be able to see that that doesn't just happen in the first year of marriage or the second or the third year it takes time so that by the time you're sitting down even if you're not in the presence of each other and you were to make a decision concerning a matter wherever the wife is or wherever the husband is you find that because of staying together understanding one another living together that they begin to see things the same way so that when they meet you find that the decision the wife made or the husband made are, are the same so uh, sometimes the, the choleric husband wants that or want you to cooperate quickly don't ask questions that is how they are you know they want you to cooperate quickly that takes time because many times you find husband and wife arguing or not being able to see eye to eye because of cooperation quickly like yes sir or yes madam you know without asking or without <laughs> looking at it uh, in in any other perspective they want you to just quickly obey it takes time and it's not easy than I'm, like i'm saying so it takes a lot of patience a lot of prayer a lot of um you know coordination working together and accepting each other for you to uh, realize some of these things so that you will do them with ease without complaining or finding it difficult be supportive be submissive as a husband be supportive as a wife be submissive that goes a long way in enhancing that relationship when you're able to support one another when you're able to submit to one another you find that you enjoy your relationship better things are flow in your marriage better than if you're doing your own things and you are hard-hearted rebellious and all that kind of a thing choleric wise i'll tell you let him take the credit there are things you would do as a woman and you see where the credit goes on the side of the man sometimes just allow it you know just allow it don't fight don't um, emphasize don't because even even if he takes the credit it's for the benefit of the whole family yeah so sometimes just be gracious allow him to take the credit and it shall be well it won't do any harm to you number three recognize that your husband has extraordinary instincts also and a natural flair for leadership especially being a choleric they are like born natural leaders you know they are natural leaders they are they don't have to go to school to learn about leadership skills somehow god has given them that grace and they are born as natural leaders these are people even when they are growing up as young as young people they they stand out as leaders they stand out and they they, they are called upon many times in in groups you find that the ones that are picked upon to lead the troop or to to be the the team leaders of of whatever groups wherever they are just make it easy to follow him as a leader because they are natural leaders as a wife just make it easy it will be easy for you to follow his lead you know as he as he uh, takes you recognize that he has some very 
um, unique instincts, ex extraordinary leadership skills, and just let it be easy for you to follow his lead. Cholerics dislike people who are lazy and uh, not interested in working constantly because cholerics are hardworking people. They are very focused. We have said this before. They are very focused. They are very goal oriented. They are very result oriented people. So they don't entertain laziness around their lives. If you have such people as team, as, as team members even in the office or even in a class assignment group work, you find that things move swiftly and you get the, the assignment done within no time. So they dislike people who are lazy. They don't like people who also who resist authority. Why? Because they have that instinct of leadership. And also they don't like people who are uh, independent and, and uh, disloyal because they like when we are moving one direction let's move as a unit when we are speaking something let's speak one voice because of that kind of leadership instincts within them so find it in your heart to follow uh, without resisting to be loyal to to work together to flow with them and to also participate give put in effort don't look like you're lazy as a husband don't look like you're lazy as a wife because those things hinder relationships you know don't look like you're lazy uh, try 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 put in as much contribution as you can so that that betters your your relationship the husband or the wife of a choleric has a right as a wife you have a right or as a husband you have a right to just let your spouse know exactly where you stand you know sometimes when it comes to sharing issues, eh, you find maybe the husband is shying away from speaking his heart or the woman. But those things, you know, mm, matters that are not spoken clearly between husband and wife, they end up becoming issues later. Though they end up becoming unresolved matters because you feel like in your heart there's something you needed to say or you needed to speak out, but you didn't get a chance. And if that thing progresses on for, for, for some duration of time, it becomes a hindrance in your marriage. So please, let them know. Just understand that you have a right to speak and give each other audience. That is a tip for cholerics. Give each other audience so that now things are clearly communicated and your partner understands where things are and they're able to follow. Also, just take up prayer put in some work pray and see that things will change if we are people who will continue to nag especially about those things that you know the stand that you have you know and this opinion that you're carrying and you didn't share you find that 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 nagging will affect your relationship will affect your marriage will affect your spouse in one or another so just be able to speak clearly lovingly and if if it is a difficult matter, just together take it to the Lord in prayer and you find that God will always make a way. It will be, you will be able to manage that thing easier than if everybody took a hard line stand. Another tip, appreciate your spouse's accomplishment. It's very important because you know what? When man and woman stay together for some time, sometimes what tends to happen is you take your husband for granted, you take your wife for granted. So don't take each other for granted appreciate each other's compliments recognize what somebody does don't don't devalue them and you will find um, some good and it will add value to your relationship so please appreciate each other don't don't take each other lightly don't take each other for granted what do you do if you're married to a melancholic husband or a melancholic wife First, what are some of the tips i need number one give them stability Melancholics often have a passion for organization. You know, they like to see things that are orderly. They like schedules. They will not be late. They like to see things done in a certain way, at a certain time, you know, every day. For them, that creates stability. If you are haphazard, if you don't have order, if you don't have timing, if you don't have a calendar and the way of doing things, that really destabilizes them. They feel awkward. So, give them stability that is a very important tip if you are a woman give your husband st stability as a melancholic if you are a man and your wife is a melancholy give your wife stability don't just do things haphazardly 
try to do some organization, try to do things in a certain way, orderly, every day, because that creates stability. When you find that families are kind of disorganized and nobody is listening to another, maybe because it's one of the, that is one of the reasons. So give each other stability. Number two, give them space. Give your melancholic husband space. Sometimes they need it. Give your melancholic wife space. Sometimes it's important for them. They need space that is exclusively theirs and not for their spouse and not for their children. What we call me time. Just give them space. It's an important thing. It will enhance your marriage and your relationship. Don't just all the time be in each other's faces. Give each other space. Away from the children, away from your assignments and duties, away from, from each other. Very important. Give them silence. Very important also. Give them those quiet moments. There are sometimes you just need quietness. You don't want noise. There's no TV. There's no children screaming. There are no phone calls. You know, that continual chatting with each other, just give each other silence. Do this often. Another thing I would say, be sensitive. Let's be sensitive to the things that concern your husband. Be sensitive. There are some things that concern him. Be sensitive about them. There are some things that concern your wife. Be sensitive. Uh, uh, at least try. Don't ignore. Because the more you live with each other, it's very easy to begin to ignore and not value whatever somebody says or whatever somebody does. Please be very uh, deliberate with this matter. Be sensitive, show some concern so that that relationship has some intimacy of some sort. Now, what to do if you're married to a phlegmatic husband or a phlegmatic wife? Number one, give them peace. Phlegmatics are peacemakers. They don't like chaos. They don't like noise. They don't like disorganization. Peace is a very important thing. If you have a wife, who, you know, every time you're nagging, shouting, calling them names and all that, arguing all the time, it destabilizes them. And also for the men. So please, let there be peace in that home. It's a very important tip in relating to your phlegmatic husband or your phlegmatic wife. They avoid chaos and conflicts at all costs. So be, be very diplomatic in the way you resolve your conflict. Don't be a chaotic person always making noise, shouting, you know, arguing, complaining, they, that really puts down phlegmatics. So learn how to give each other peace in the home. It's an important tip that um, will enhance your relationship. Learn, let your children not be all over the place screaming and all that kind of a thing. Let there be order. Let the house not be in disarray. Like, like things are... Uh, let your home be a place of refuge like from the storm out there when you go maybe at your workplace or you're doing your business or whatever you're doing sometimes it's not easy so when your husband comes home or when your wife comes home let them find a home that is a place of refuge a home that is a shelter from the storms out there because then that is how you're able to thrive and be stable they don't like um, noise create a peaceful atmosphere you know, with music, worship music, where there's order, you've, you've done, uh, you've scheduled your domestic activities, and the home is flowing uh, smooth. So that is very important. Give the phlegmatic spouse plenty of advance notice for any upcoming events. Don't be the kind of person you just pop up with an event and tell your husband or your wife. They don't appreciate that. They don't like sudden changes or sudden plans or surprises. They like to plan themselves well in advance. You know, let, let them not be, to, like today we are going to Kinakamaos for dinner. They don't like that. Those, that, those kinds of surprises that don't bless them. So please, let, the, let it be done well in advance. Give them a notice. Let them know that you love this and this to be done on such and such a day and such and such a time so that they are able to warm up to it and prepare themselves psychologically and now desire to be there so that you you not be going alone because all the time maybe when you share about an event or some activity you find that you are alone because they don't want to jump on the bus with you because of the short notice so that is a very important tip for you to to handle them well and for you to flow with them well phlegmatics let them have good notice well in advance so that they can prepare themselves psychologically and be present for that particular event Allow them to relax 
allow your husband to relax or, or your wife. Don't see that as a sign of laziness. That is something they, they really, it's an emotional need for phlegmatics. Just that kind of relaxing, like where they have peace and they have quiet to their own, to themselves. So that uh, you, if you look, because you know, it's very easy. Have you ever seen? I know husbands who sometimes look at their wives in the, with the eye that they are lazy. And that is just an emotional need. After that rest or time alone, then they go back and embark on what they need to do. So it's, an, it's a tip that you need to, if you have it, it doesn't do any harm. And it's not the, the whole day. Sometimes it's just for some time and then that is uh, taken care of. So it's an emotional need. Please be aware and take, give them that opportunity. Allow them to relax. Allow them to have some space alone. Another thing, learn to praise your phlegmatic husband, learn to praise your phlegmatic wife. This is very key and that can, and can turn your relationship on another level. Stop noticing, start noticing those fine things that they do, fine qualities that they do and sincerely praise them, sincerely appreciate them uh, and, and let it, it gives some security and um, your words, your words of appreciation are taken very deeply. So have time, take time and praise your husband for what the kind of husband he is, for the kind of responsibility he undertakes for the family. Even, even at, at his workplace, if there are things that he, does, that he does that makes him stand out, be able to voice them and vice versa. Do that to your wife also. Praise her for the kind of mother she is. Praise her for the kind of woman she is to you. Praise her for the, her responsibilities and her achievements. That goes a long way in turning your relationship around. It's a very important tip for phlegmatic. That is a need that they have. Now, if you are married to a phlegmatic, remember to build up their self-worth. Remember to build up their self-esteem. Know how to calm their fears, you know. Give them those peaceful moments they need. Know how to calm their fears. Be there to encourage them. Be there to stand with them. Be there to support them. That is very important. Build their self-worth by supporting them, by encouraging them, by standing with them through thick and thin. You know, they, they, they need to build their self-worth, you know, with loving reassurance all the time. Instead of belittling them and criticizing them. Stand with them, build them up. You know, husband and wife, it's very important when you build each other up. By the time that man is leaving that home to go and do whatever he needs to do, he thrives. By the time that woman is leaving that home to go and do her assignments, she also stands out. So it's very important to get that support right from the home. Even if she doesn't get it elsewhere, or even if he doesn't get it elsewhere, whatever that happens at home is enough for them to stand tall and conquer whatever they need to conquer out there. So please, take it very uh, seriously, because that is just the truth of the matter. You know, sometimes if you get praises from outside and yet from your home there's nothing, sometimes it's meaningless. But when it stems from the home, as you, as you bounce outside there, it gives you the, the encouragement, the, the hope that you need to go and conquer whatever mountain that is before you. So just learn that and you will see the difference it will make in your relationship. Uh, relationship. Also learn to reassure each other and tell your husband how valuable of a, of a man he is, how valuable of a woman your wife is. Learn every day to reassure each other. That is a very important thing. That reassurance goes a long way. Yeah. Don't take it for granted. You know, applaud them. Applaud them and reassure them. You, that uh, uh, is, is also very important. It adds up you know, to the many things we are talking about, about praising them, giving each other peace, allowing each other to relax. It goes a long way. It really uh, enhances and strengthens that relationship right from the home front. Now, it's important also to frequently remind them of their wonderful qualities that people love them and they are loyal. You know, phlegmatics are very hardworking people. Phlegmatics are very 
peaceful people, you know, very peaceful people. Phlegmatics are very loyal. You, if you are looking for a loyal friend, and now when it comes to the marriage uh, setup, they will stick by your side. So remember to just remind them, remind them of those qualities. When you're living with somebody, just, it's just like in a relationship out there. If you have a, is it a girlfriend or an acquaintance, and you always tell them about how you like this or the other about them, that blesses somebody's heart. So if, if it is done at home also, it's also a very good thing, it's a very strong point. Remind each other of the qualities that you have within you that enhance and add value to your relationship. Let, let not outsiders be the ones voicing it, but in the home, there is silence on, in that regard. It's very important. Another thing, let's all learn to ask God to really help us believe in each other as husband and wife. With whichever temperament you have. Because just being married to each other is one big accomplishment, but then you need some substance to, to grow that relationship. So let's learn as 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 a wrap up to just trust god and and believe in each other believe in yourself as a woman because you have all that it takes as you engage god and you you depend on the holy spirit you have all that it takes to run that family and even as the men you have all that it takes as you believe in yourself as you trust god as you engage the holy spirit you have all that it takes to run that family to be happy and to let the will of god be done in your lives and even as you raise your children so that is such a great accomplishment that your marriage is able to stand and grow and progress as you're working with each other, bearing with each other, supporting each other, helping each other, learning tips on how to be together in that home and thrive. It's very important. Believe in each other and believe in God. Love each other. Motivate each other. Don't nag each other. You know, and as, as, I, as I said earlier, these things, take time they take time to be able to manifest they take time for you to be able to see the fruit so it is important that you learn to be patient with each other give each other time and as you are consistent and are you are intentional about doing and working together you will see the result you will enjoy the fruit you will see the benefit and your marriage your and the relationship will turn around and will manifest something different than when you began your lives together. So I just want to take this opportunity to encourage us in, with our different tem temperaments. Just learn the various tips that will enhance that marriage and believe God to take your relationship to another level. So let's believe and pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to bless you even for allowing us to learn this evening that there are different tips that we can have that will enhance our relationship. There are deep, different tips that we can engage in our marriage to better our lives. And so I pray for every woman and every man out there that Lord, you shall give us the grace. You shall give us the patience. You shall give us the ability, my Father, to be able to work on some of the things that we need to work on so that our marriages are able to stand and thrive be better, be stronger, even as you help us raise children under our, our leadership. And so I pray that this evening you will begin to turn some situations around in our lives and in our marriages. Lord God Almighty, where we have been weak, you will strengthen us. Where we have been without understanding and knowledge, you, you, you are um, enlightening us on some of these things. And so I pray that Spirit of God, we will find ourselves growing from strength to strength. We will find ourselves growing from grace to grace as we embrace some of the tips that will strengthen our relationship. So we give our marriages to you, my Father. Where we have offended each other, where we have stepped on each other, where we have ignored each other, we ask you to have mercy. And that this day you will mark a new beginning in our relationship as we, we have been enlightened even on how to, to enhance the relationship of marriage in our home and so i pray for marriages i cover every marriage with the blood of jesus i pray that oh god almighty on this on this um, front 
we will not struggle because we have some understanding on how to deal with each other. You will give us victory upon victory even as we, begin to, we continue to engage with each other and even with our children. And so we give you praise and we give you glory to this end. We bless every man and we bless every woman. Even for those that are anticipating marriage, I pray you will lead them and you will direct them. And indeed that your will and purpose will be accomplished in their lives as far as marriage is concerned. We give you glory, we give you praise, honor and adoration because you are well able to help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God bless you and see you next time. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. These are keys that keeps your marriage joyful. Let's get to know what the word of God prescribes. Marriage is a good thing.